I am Tisa Nicole Junius of Hallsboro, North Carolina, and currently I live in High Point, North Carolina, and I am on a journey with colon cancer. My story begins February the 4th, 2020. I went to have a colonoscopy, not because I was feeling bad or because I was sick in any way, but I was just going to have a colonoscopy because that's the thing to do when you reach a certain age. I reached that age. From that colonoscopy, the results were colon cancer. My doctor said that she recognized a mass in my colon that she recognized to be cancerous. She said, but if it is, we can fix this. It's caught early enough that we can cut it out and things will be good. But she did want to do a biopsy to make certain that she was correct. So on the next day, I get a call from her and she says she was correct. The biopsy showed that the mass in my colon is cancerous. So I'm thinking to myself, I officially have colon cancer. What was my reaction to this? I just said, okay. I was not uh, scared. I did not get upset. I had no anxiety about it. She said, colon cancer. I said, okay. And um, it was just, you know, just trying to grasp, trying to wrap my brain around cancer and me. I have cancer. But again, I did not get upset. It was not overwhelming to me. Um, I didn't break out in a sweat or anything like that. I just said, okay. So the doctor went forward with making appointments for me. Um, I had to have a CT scan. Um, and from the CT scan, we went to an MRI. And from the MRI, we went to a liver biopsy because in the CT, they did see more um, lesions on my liver so that it officially made it stage four colon cancer but now again I was not upset or anxious in any way stage four cancer most people hear that and they put one foot in the grave already just hearing that um, it's not the case for me so with the stage four cancer because it was in two locations that meant that I needed to see a colorectal doctor and a liver doctor. So there were a lot of procedures and processes in between all of that. The month of March for me was a lot of appointments, <laughs> a lot of visits to the hospitals, to the, um, I think it's when I made my first visit to the cancer center here in High Point. And I still, throughout the whole situation because I wasn't sick, I didn't feel sick, I did not feel bad or scared to know that I have stage four colon cancer. The procedures that I went through was the CT, the MRI, um, liver biopsy, I had to have a port cath installed, and I'm pretty sure there was something else. But all of that happened in the month of March. Again, my diagnosis was February the 4th, and throughout the month of March, I had appointments and procedures, and then April came. Well, actually, uh, when I met with the oncologist, which was in the month of March, she looked over everything, and she ordered a PET scan, which I had not previously had. So the CT, the MRI, the biopsies, and then the PET scan. So they're just looking at me glowing from the inside. I got all kinds of contrast all up in me right about now, or then. Um, and the PET scan showed, you know, a larger uh, area of cancer on my liver. Again, okay. Again, no anxiety. I had to calm my mother down a bit, but she was good about it. Family members, you know, they again they hear cancer and they go that way. Friends, they hear cancer and their mind is exploding, but I had to reassure them as I reassure everyone, I was not sick, I didn't feel sick, therefore I can't think bad about it. I didn't let it pull me down. Other people's stories about cancer 
for themselves or for other people and how sick they got and different kinds of things. But it didn't pull me down because I was not feeling any kind of sick. So I'm just doing my everyday thing. I go to work, go home, I go play a little bit with friends, you know. Um, March the 29th, I think it was. Yes, March the 29th was my first chemo session. Wow, chemo. So, chemotherapy. I've heard the word before, <laughs> but in reference to me, all of this was new. So, I, when she said we want to do chemo, we want to do 12 sessions of chemotherapy. I said, okay. And um, again, I had no fear or anxiety. I didn't know what to expect, but I said, okay, everything else that came about went well all the procedures, so let's do chemo. So she explained that it would be, um, for me it was gonna begin on a Monday. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Every other Monday, every 14 days we start over. Monday involved me uh, being at the Cancer Center in High Point. Um, had to do some blood draws, meet with the doctor, and then the actual chemo session was a few hours. Um, they had to hook me up and through my porta cath, which is why we did that process, for the chemotherapy medicines to be infused into me via that way. So a few hours I'm sitting there um, on that Monday, and then when I got ready to leave, this you know technology man it is so crazy, but I'm thankful for it. But my chemo juices were still plugged into my porta cath and it was like a, a little football is what they described it to me. I refer to it as my little nuclear football but it was a ball about this big that had the chemo juice in it and they put it in a fanny pack. I'm bringing back the fanny pack and I would wear that. Um, the fanny pack with the chemo nuclear ball in it still plugged into my port and I could go out and do things. So I left Monday with my portable chemo and I slept with it. Um, there was a way it could be arranged so I could shower with it. Um, not in the fanny pack, we just, you know, just kind of work that out. And so it was Monday and then all day Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, um, I would go to work in the morning. I was scheduled to have, uh, to unplug around two something in the afternoon something of that nature so I could get most of my work day in and then I would leave and go to the cancer center they would unplug me and then I'm free until the next other Monday so we would do this every 14 days three days I'm having chemotherapy session as I'm out and about in the stores you know we still have to be careful we got a whole lot of stuff going on in our atmosphere but um, I was being extra careful, but I was just, you know, just walking around and thinking to myself, this is funny. <laughs> I, here I am in Walmart uh, going through a chemo session at this moment. I have stage four colon cancer. What? And I'm out here chemo and in Walmart. Please don't bump into me. But um, it was just, it's just different. It, it, I just still didn't feel like anything was wrong with me. And we're going through all these processes. So chemo was three months, every other Monday, as I said. So that was six sessions. And then after the six sessions, they wanted to see what the progress was. What's the progress? So the progress, the progress from three months of chemo and you know, taking care of myself the progress showed um, considerable shrinkage. We did a, a CT after my sixth chemo session and it was considerable shrinkage. The, the tumor went from a four point something to a two point something. And everybody was excited. My oncologist was excited, canceled all my uh, further appointments. I, I, I was getting those notices in my emails, appointment canceled, appointment canceled. Wait a minute, why did you cancel my appointments? 
And so she said the CT was very good. And now we want to talk to the surgeons and see if they're ready to do surgery. So I said, okay, surgery. Again, no anticipation, no fear, no anxiety. I'm thinking, you know, we're just moving on this process, man. Some people, you know, said, hey, if the chemo is working like that, maybe they'll show up, you know, it's all gone already. Well, I didn't want to cancel the process because to me, everything with this, you know, being told in February that I have colon cancer, stage four colon cancer because it metastasized to my liver. I didn't want to cancel the process because this is a God thing in here somewhere. You know, God is all over it and he has it set up in the process. And for some reason, he's using me as a testimony as to how you can go through this, how you can go through this. So um, from the last chemo was in June and conversations with the doctors and the doctors amongst the doctors, I finally had a chance to meet the liver surgeon and he looked at the CT, we talked, uh, discussed my reactions and feelings with the chemo and um, he chose a date to let's do surgery. I said okay and he said we just need to confirm with the colorectal surgeon that he's available on that day as well and we'll do both surgeries. The colorectal surgeon will of course cut the cancer out of the colon and then the liver surgeon will cut the cancer off of my liver all in the same day. Like, okay, <laughs> in the same surgery. I'm thinking, okay, they're gonna, um, you know, just operate on me. Again, I still had no fear about the surgery. My anticipation started to be, what is recovery gonna be like? I mean, that's the part I, that had me a little question, you know, a little concern. I don't like pain. So I'm wondering after surgery, is it gonna be pain? I found out there's pain. So, surgery. Surgery was not bad. The surgery itself wasn't bad. I was, you know, kind of looking forward to being surged on because I've never had surgery before. But um, it was okay. It was, I think, five and a half hour surgery. So prior to, um, I talked with the surgeon on the, you know, the pre-op visit, and the colorectal surgeon explained that he would go first, and then. Um, you know, once he does his cutting and everything, and it was laparoscopic, so for the most part I don't have big scars, I have little scars, but I still have some scars. But he would go first, and while he was working on me, the liver surgeon would be working on someone else in his office. And so they would tag team, you know, like wrestling, I guess. They tag team, switch places, and, you know, do their thing, what they are experts at. So the whole surgery to um, cut the cancer out of the colon and to cut the cancer off of the liver was about five and a half hours. I don't remember any of it. Imagine. Anesthesia. <laughs> Those doctors did a great job as well. Um, so the recovery, I was in the hospital for was it five days, six days. Surgery was August 11th and they let me go home on August 16th. And uh, it was a good thing. I just had to prove to them that I could, uh, that my colon was still working as it should. So that process came about on early Monday morning. So Monday evening, afternoon, evening, they sent me home. My mother was here with me the entire time when I called her in February and let her know what the doctors had told me for every procedure, for every doctor's appointment. She came to High Point, she was here with me to go through that with me. So she was there for surgery and she's here for recovery because I'm still recovering and my mother's still here with me because I'm a favorite daughter. She's supposed to be here. So that's a great thing. The, um, the week after surgery was painful, but it did ease up. It was like a moment. <laughs> it's just like it's a moment. I cannot recall the intensity of the pain right now. I know that it was intense because at the time I was feeling it. Intense pain. But it got better as things do with time. 
you know. So by Friday, I was not taking the narcotic pain meds anymore. Um, I was using a pain relief cream that I am, you know, very fond of for pain relief, and it worked tremendously for me for the exterior pain. But the um, the narcotics, I got those cut out kind of right away and went to Tylenol and ibuprofen for when I did have a pain. But by Saturday after the Monday that I was released, the pain that I felt there was something there, but it wasn't the intense pain. So I'm just still moving cautiously. Um, now I can roll over in my bed to both sides, yay. But I had to be cautious about that because they did a lot of work on my right side. So I could feel that, but it was not bad. And again, this whole process, I hate to say it, but colon cancer was kind of easy for me. Why am I telling you this? Why am I sharing my story with you? Um, some of you know some of the story already. Some of you didn't know some of the story already. But as I was going through this, and I've you know, said before that I had no anxiety, no trepidation, no fear, no worries about it. When I was told you have colon cancer, and then they found the staging, you have stage four colon cancer because it metastasized from your colon to the liver, but there's nowhere else in your body that we saw with the CT, the MRI, the PET scan. There's no other cancer in there. After surgery, it's cut out, they did another CT or something, I don't know, I was asleep. But they saw no more cancer in there. They cut out some lip nodes and polyps just to make sure. But it's gone. It's gone. And the whole process, the only thing that hurt was surgery, after surgery. And I, I'm going to do some more chemo to finish it up, six more sessions just to, I guess, be clean or clear. That's up to the doctors. I'm gonna tell them like I told them before, okay. But why am I sharing this with you? Because generally, usually when people hear cancer, they freeze up, they get scared, they start sweating, they start buying funeral clothes for themselves and everybody in the family. That was not the case with me. It could be because I wasn't feeling that I had cancer in any way. It, it was caught early. Those preventative measures that doctors tell you about, go with that. <laughs> go check and see because I wasn't sick. I didn't feel bad at all. No GI problems. Nothing told me that I was sick. I'm walking the track, trying to get my eight laps in lane eight, you know. I'm doing fine. Everything is just moving along. And if I had not gone to have that colonoscopy, I would not have known that I had cancer growing in me, when would I have found out? Probably by the time I found out, by the time I got sick, it would be to the point that there was no coming back. There would be to the point where we can't fix it. You know, it may have gotten to that, but it didn't. Why? I can't tell you why. I don't know why. Just because sometimes you just gotta, you know, follow the rules. You know, if they say, go have this check, go, go have it checked. Don't wait. If you're not a doctor, you don't know what's wrong. Even if you are a doctor, ask another doctor to find out what's wrong. But the, the biggest thing with me about this is that when, when some people found out that I had cancer, and I wasn't keeping it a secret, it's just everybody doesn't need to know everything about you. They had problems. They had some fear that they needed to overcome. My family members, my friends, my co-workers, they were like, what? Cancer? Oh my God, are you serious? Well, what in the world? Well, why is this happening to you? Why do bad things happen to good people? But my question was, why not me? You know, this this cancer thing is almost a natural kind of thing. I guess it is. I don't know. But it did happen to me. And God walked me through it. I have to give him all the praise, honor, and glory for everything. For when I first heard it, to the point after surgery, to the point now, I'm still recovering. I'm in slow motion, but I'm getting better. You know, I I'm, feel like I'm almost ready. feel like I'm almost ready, but common sense has let me know. Just chill, take it easy, go slow, get back to 100%, and 
and then go and do everything that I was doing, busy lady. But when you hear cancer, it doesn't mean death, not right away. We're all gonna die from something. But if you hear cancer or if you hear diabetes or if you hear anything that is a report that's given to you, if you don't feel bad, don't let other people make you feel bad because that's the expectation that you're supposed to be down and out. I didn't stop working until a couple of days before surgery because I didn't feel bad. I mean, I feel like I could, I could go back to work now, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going back to work yet. I kind of get used to this being at home thing. But um, I'll go back when I feel comfortable that I can do my job at my job and um, just keep on going. You know, it's a testimony. If you know anybody, tell them to watch this video. After you watch it, watch it again, you know, because you don't have to be down and out just because a negative report comes to you. If anything, be that one of a kind person to cancel all the norms. You know, just be different. I'm different, I strive to be different, but this right here is a God thing. He said, hey, let's do colon cancer. I'm like, uh, really? Okay, let's do it. So we did it, you know. God sent Satan after Job. Consider my servant Job. Well, this time he said, consider my servant Tisa. What's she gonna do about it? I'm trusting God all the way through. We're not to the end of it yet. We won't be to the end until is at the end, my story is continuing. This is my testimony. Don't let other people pull you down. Don't let negative reports pull you down. Live your life. If you trust God, trust Him to, through, and after anything that comes at you. That's my story. Take one, take two, <laughs> take 37. <laughs>